This video will walk through an integration sample for the M2Sys Cloud ABIS API. Uh, so Cloud ABIS is uh, a web-based API uh, that allows you to integrate uh, biometric enrollment and uh, various comparison types of operations uh, into basically any Windows or web-based application. Uh, and uh, it's a uh, system that allows you to integrate uh, various different biometric modalities uh, and leverage a hosted cloud-based backend matching system. Uh, and all of that is encapsulated into uh, a very easy to integrate framework. So the sample that we're going to be going through in this video uh, is an ASP.NET sample uh, and in it we're going to be uh, using a class file uh, which encapsulates all of the different uh, parameters and methods and um, different inputs and outputs of the API uh, to help make the integration as simple as possible. However, uh, if you can't or don't want to use the class file for any reason, um, we do have thorough API documentation available, uh, which will go through all of the uh, details of the, uh, the inputs uh, and results of all of the different method calls. So there's two main types of operations in the Cloud ABIS API. Uh, the first is authenticate, and then there are the uh, various different biometric operations. Uh, so authenticate uh, is basically you're authenticating to the API. You need to do this once at the beginning of your, uh, your application session. And once you've authenticated, then you can make multiple different biometric calls uh, during that session. So if we look at the authentication page here, you can see that the uh, Cloud ABIS authentication call requires three parameters. Uh, and these are all just keys um, which are associated with your account in the Cloud ABIS cloud environment. Um, so if we look at the code behind the page, uh, you can see that these three settings are getting populated from a config file. Uh, right here and obviously you can load these settings from uh, a config file or a database or, or whatever makes the most sense in your environment. So then once a uh, once the user submits the authentication request um, you can see that we're displaying a simple result message and so if we look at the page code behind this authentication call uh, very simply what we're doing here is um, we're pulling the URL uh, that we're interfacing with uh, for the cloud ABIS environment again this is just coming from the same config file and then we are uh, creating a new instance of the uh, basically the Cloud ABIS uh, client class um, and uh, in this case it's the fingerprint client so we're going to be uh, performing biometric operations against fingerprint data in this case um, and as parameters to this uh, instantiation you can see we're passing it um, a couple of the keys that were used um, in the uh, in the form along with the URL that we're going to be interacting with. So at that point we make the authenticate method call to this uh, uh, client object, uh, the Cloud Avis client object, and uh, this authenticate call returns a boolean and uh, in the case of true that means that the authentication was successful. Uh, so we can see the little message that was shown on the form. But uh, in addition to that, you can see that we're also uh, storing a reference to this uh, Cloud ABIS uh, client object uh, in a session variable for future reference when we're performing the biometric operations later. 
So once you've authenticated to the Cloud ABIS API, uh, then you're able to go back and perform any of the various biometric operations. So let's go take a look at enrollment or, or registration first. So registration, um, you can see the page here is uh, requiring three parameters. So the first is the format of the biometric data. Uh, that's being passed. So this is the format of either the template uh, or the image data that's being passed. Um, since we're dealing with uh, fingerprint modality here, uh, we can accept either an image or uh, a template format of the fingerprint data. The second is the customer key. And if you remember, this is one of the three values that were passed into the authenticate call. So we've just retained this uh, customer key um, so that we're able to uh, pass it to the registration call. So again, this makes sure that uh, the registration call goes to your particular customer environment in the cloud. The third thing that's asked for here is the registration ID. So this is the unique identifier that would be uh, associated to or, or linked to this biometric enrollment. Um, so here it's just a text field that we can type in, but obviously um, during integration, you're going to be passing a, an identifier from your existing application. So this would be like a person number or an employee number um, now, one thing we don't see in the page here is the biometric template data itself, and that's because this sample page uh, is leveraging the M2Sys Cloud Scanner API to do the capture. So the template data is captured and kind of passed behind the scenes through a session variable. However, if we go look at the definition of the registration call here, um, you can see what the format of the biometric XML uh, blob needs to look like. Um, so there's a, a sample for XML as well as JSON, um, but effectively there's um, uh, two different um, objects or tags uh, that are going to contain uh, a base64 encoded um, version of the template or image data uh, that you're going to be passing to this call. So in this case, since we're going to be using the built-in cloud scanner uh, functionality within this ASP sample, uh, we can just click Submit, and it'll send the captured data uh, that we captured uh, a few moments ago from Cloud Scanner. And you can see here that uh, we've got our results, and uh, among the results that are provided is um, the status of the call. So was the call successful or not? And then was the operation itself, was the registration successful? So in this case, uh, the registration was successful. So if we take a look uh, at the code behind this page, uh, you can see that, again, the customer key we're getting from that same web config file uh, that we used during authentication. And then when we click the submit button, we are pulling the captured template data uh, from the session variable where it was stored in our earlier Cloud Scanner example. So please refer to that video uh, if you haven't seen that yet. Um, but basically uh, what happens next is we're just checking to make sure that that captured biometric um, data is uh, you know, not empty. Um, the data is there. Uh, we're creating a new instance um, uh, based on the reference to the uh, Cloud API object that was uh, originally uh, instantiated during the authentication call. Um, so we're just uh, creating a new variable and referencing uh, to that object, uh, which should already be authenticated. We're double checking to make sure that it has been authenticated and that it's valid here. Um, we're setting some of the parameters um, with regards to the format of the data. And then we're making a call to the register method and we're passing uh, the necessary parameters, the customer key, the unique registration identifier and the biometric data, XML data. 
So this call is going to return a matching result object uh, as the result. So we just need to check and make sure it's not null. And assuming that it is not null, we uh, in this case are just uh, showing an output of the result in the page. But uh, obviously you'll want to parse through it and um, you know have your code operate uh, and perform what it needs to do based on whether the operation was successful or not. And so then uh, obviously there's some other messages that get shown further down here based on uh, if the matching result was uh, was null or if the authentication wasn't uh, wasn't found to be uh, correct uh, or if we didn't find the biometric data successfully, etc. So that's basically all that's needed. Um, you know, as long as you're capturing the biometric data from a uh, cloud scanner or another source and formatting it uh, based on the uh, the format suggested in the uh, the documentation, uh, very simple call to perform biometric enrollment. So the next type of biometric operation we would probably want to perform after uh, a registration would be a comparison. Um, so there's two types of comparisons. There's one-to-many or identification and one-to-one -one or verification. Um, we'll take a look at identification here. So identification, uh, you can see on the page, basically um, the first two parameters that were needed for registration are also needed here. So we need to know what format is the data that uh, we're passing to this call. Uh, what's the format of the biometric data, uh, template type or image type. And then our, uh, our unique customer key uh, associated with our Cloud ABIS account. So again, behind the scenes, this page is taking advantage of uh, the Cloud Scanner uh, functionality. So if we take a look at the code for identification, you can see again we're getting our customer key from the uh, from the config file and then when we click the submit button we're going to be again pulling the biometric data from the session variable that was populated from our capture call to Cloud Scanner. So again, please refer back to the Cloud Scanner video for specifics on how to perform a biometric capture using Cloud Scanner. But if I go ahead and submit this identification call, you'll see that the result we get back, um, first of all, gives us the status of the call. So was it handled successfully? In this case, it was. Uh, and then what's the result of the actual operation? In this case, a match was found. Uh, so the template uh, was found to be a match to a enrollment that already exists. Um, and then in this case, we're going to look at the best result because we're just wanting to find the one closest match. And the ID field here uh, contains the matching registration number that was associated with that registration. Uh, and so again, this is the same registration ID that uh, we submitted uh, earlier for the, uh, the registration call.